the uh, question I heard about the network management practices of Comcast was quite fascinating. There seems to be a divergence of opinion here to some extent about whether the practices used by Comcast are widely accepted or acceptable or whether they're aberrant. Uh, the question I have uh, for the panelists, uh, maybe John, you could start, is, is do you believe that these are acceptable network management practices? Can uh, have industry bodies like um, IETF take into view on these practices? Is that the normal way that if an industry is going to go about network management, they would run it through the uh, industry bodies uh, as often has been done? And uh, there's also a question raised, if you could follow up about, have our other broadband uh, providers using the reset packet uh, technique? George. Um, the issues of, con of congestion they're addressing are decades old. I'm not aware of anybody who has proposed what is known in the literature as a man-in-the-middle attack to, as a way to try and deal with congestion. Um, there may be somebody out there who has, but I, I, I do not believe it is a, a standard technique in any sense. Tech chip. It's actually quite common in, throughout the world that TCP resets are used. In fact. University of Colorado recently blamed Comcast for one of their problems where some of their applications were broken and they saw TCP resets. They blamed Comcast. It got put all over the internet, slash dot, slash dot, it dug, dug it. And hundreds, hundreds of thousands of users swarmed the site to see what Comcast did lately. Turned out that it was, it was University of Colorado's own firewall that issued the TCP resets. TCP resets, even though they're not standardized, there are a lot of things that are not standardized that are quite common in, on the internet. For example, if a user is trying to get to a file share and the server's not there because their network's not connected, that computer will hang up for one minute just waiting for an answer. And so a smart network administrator will actually issue a TCP reset to tell that user to cancel out that orphan session and break it such that the computer doesn't get locked up. So the technique is actually quite common. It's, it's not this method where you're modifying user data. No, no user data is ever modified. You are modifying the control bits to manage the network. It, it is not the ideal solution. Obviously, it's not totally accurate. It's not very granular. And the industry is moving to newer technologies. But it's not this illegal forgery that some have painted it to be. And speaking about the 1.45 AM uh, TCP resets, ISPs all over the world, they've found that up to 12% of sessions get reset all over the world. This, it's, it's almost like there's 12% of background noise of TCP resets that are happening that may not be coming from Comcast, but from, it could be coming from any device on the internet. All routers, all firewalls support that feature, and we don't really know where it's coming from. I disagree. All routers and all firewalls don't uh, support that feature because it is non-standard and it's not um, an accepted method. I will agree that some do, but I, the distinction to be made here is that these are gateways from the public internet to somebody's private internet, in this case the University of Colorado, the lab that they happened to, to work on, um, had one of these devices that issued resets in the way that George described. Um, it ran out of space in something called the network address translation table. Uh, it's a, a table that says if, if uh, it's coming in on this port, it's to go to this computer. And it takes a limited num there's a limited amount of memory in a router, and that memory filled up. And so in order to manage that, um, that router manufacturer, who's got very little memory to program within, um, chose this method. It's not to be used on the open internet. And, uh, and, and that's the distinction there. Uh, I also want to clarify something that I think George is getting incorrect. Uh, it is standard on the TCP, um, in the TCP protocol that if you attempt to make a connection to a port that isn't open to a connection, that network stack will send a reset. That's appropriate, that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to tell the caller, um, you're not authorized to talk to me right now and that reset is intended to resync the communication so that if, it, if the endpoint thinks, well, wait a minute, I was just talking to you, 
that endpoint knows to close that session and reopen another one or however the application provider wants to handle um, that kind of exception. George was describing standard behavior as, as something that, um, that's not covered in the standard, and it is. John? Focus the question a little bit. Uh, clearly, there are devices that use reset packets. The question and is whether they use reset packets as a way of dealing with congestion, which is what Comcast said. That is not what happened at the University of Colorado. It was used for a totally different purpose, which you just heard a much better technical explanation of. And I don't know of cases. I'd love for anybody to come forward and cite broadband providers or research papers or textbooks that use this method as a congestion control method as opposed to something else. I haven't seen it, but maybe it's out there. Floyd's paper, which became best current practice number 60. And she did that work and found that, uh, as George said, there is some number of uh, spurious uh, reset packets on the network. Um, I don't know about 12%, but uh, uh, the paper is also a little dated as well. Um, but again, the conclusion was this is abusive and harmful, not standard. Well, Robbie, you included in your materials uh, Sandvine's promotional uh, information. And Sandvine obviously is marketing itself and is probably sold and implemented in uh, other ISPs throughout the country. Is that your experience? Um, that, is, that is my experience. It, uh, um, I did a test on Cox Communications that showed very similar behavior, well, exactly the same behavior um, that I saw with Comcast. Unfortunately, I can only test what I have access to, so uh, I don't know how widespread it is. Uh, is Sandvine what Comcast was using for uh, the TCP resets? They, they, they weren't specific about it, but that, uh, I think it's, uh, it's prob probably the case that they were using Sandvine. But uh, like I said, um, there were recent studies that show that all over the world, Italy, Europe, there is a background noise of TCP resets that just happened. And there's not this distinction between private and public. There's no distinction. Because a, a TCP reset that's issued on a private network can leak out to the internet. So just because you see a TCP reset, you don't know where that came from. It could have come from some device from a private network. And so these, these issues, uh, these, these things happen on the internet quite often. In my case, though, I want to I wanna make clear that I did try two different networks. I tried my ISP, which is Comcast, in another ISP, which was not Comcast, and the resets only occurred when Comcast was involved. And that testing, that method of, of comparing the two experiences, it's the same method that was used by the AP and by the Electronic Frontier Foundation to, to corroborate my findings. And you say that some other ISPs, though, you think do use similar technology. Professor Lessig talked about us getting at the truth. I'm wondering, uh, how would we be able to determine if there are, uh, as, as George, as you're suggesting, other ISPs that are using uh, these reset packets for purposes of network management, if we're going to look at the practices of Comcast, do we not need to look at the practices of a number of other uh, companies uh, that may be using similar technology? Well, the, uh, I believe uh, certain companies have installed in their client sensor software. Um, so the application vendors can put detection software in their software. So if your software is being distributed to a million users, you have a million sensors out all over the internet that can collect and aggregate, aggregate the data quite accurately. That'd be, that'd be useful. I mean, John, do you think then this is a is an practice only used by Comcast or are there other companies you think they're used? Um, again, I, I'll, I'll be the first to say if anybody knows of one, put it in the, put it in the proceeding. I don't know of one. Well, um, communications. It's, it's, it's hard to find out with, you know, you can do what is essentially called you know, black box, text, box testing, testing, which is what Rob is doing. And that's one way to try and find out experimentally, or you can hope they come forward. It's not easy. I think, can I, just, just, I, I think it would help if the commission you know, first answered the question, why do you want to know? Because if, if you've already come to the conclusion, as much of the technical community has, that this should not be on the internet, and you already know that Comcast is doing it, and put a stop to that. You'll send a message to the rest of the community that you're going to come looking for them.